In last week's episode of Soap, Elaine told Danny that if he tried to put an end to their relationship, she would have her father put an end to Danny. Bert ended up agreeing to go to an institution where he can hopefully put an end to his invisibility. Meanwhile, Jessica might end up behind bars since the judge she's ended up with once invested and lost $40,000 with Chester. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is Soap. believe it. Danny's bringing home a girl. I'm a nervous wreck. Mary, what are you nervous about? Listen, a guy brings home a girl. It's important. It's serious. I don't know. I used to bring him home because I couldn't pay for dinner. <laughs> I hope she likes us. I hope she's nice. Oh, God, I'm nervous. Mary, Mary, wait a minute. You've got this all wrong. She's the one being brought home. She's supposed to be nervous, not you. You're right. Hey. I'm not being looked over. I'm doing the looking over. Right. I'm the one that has to like her. Right. Then why am I so nervous? Mm -hmm. Beats me. Doc, there is one thing. This is obviously someone Danny likes a lot. Someone special, you know? So I think we ought to get to know her a little longer before we spring certain things on her. Like what? <laughs> like if you get the urge to become invisible, for example. <laughs> I think that you ought to get to know her before you let her see you do that. Oh, well, oh, yeah, of course. You know, I suppose I shouldn't tell her about being committed next week either. Oh, it's it's them. It's them. Gee. Hi. Mary. Bert, what are you doing? Open the door. Mary, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but it's a guy. Must be contagious. Danny's as gay as Jody. <laughs> He's with a guy. Bert, what are you talking about? Open the door. Okay, then you'll see. Now, oh, just don't scream. <laughs> I'm little fruit city. <laughs> what are you, fruit cake? Get your hands off me. Bert, you lay on Bert. Take it easy. He's a bodyguard. What? Yeah, you see, uh, Lane's father, uh, he worries about her, so she has a bodyguard. <gasps> and I thought I was overprotective. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do we get to meet her, or does she just wave from the car? No, no, she'll be right in. Ben, have you slept with her yet? Oh. I mean, because when you do, what happens with the girl? <laughs> uh, Elaine, this is my mother, hello. Mary Campbell. Hi. Hello. This is my stepdad, Bert Campbell. Yes, hello. Mom, Dad, this is Elaine Lefkowitz. <laughs> Jewish. What of it? Nothing. I, I love Jewish people. Elaine, come in, come in, sit down. Sit down. Danny, Jewish? So? You don't know about Jewish girls? What? They're hot. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have yourself a lot of fun here if you aren't already. <laughs> so, come on, tell me, uh, how did you two meet? <laughs> well, he broke in through my bedroom. <laughs> Boy, you Jews got the greatest sense of humor. It's the truth. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing you're here tonight, because next week Bert's going to be committed. He thinks he can make himself invisible. I want you to know everything about this family before marrying into it. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. hey what is he? He's a weirdo. I don't know. Get, get, get your hands off me, you girl. See that? He thinks that doll is real, and to tell you the truth, sometimes so do I. He's nuts. He's my son. He's still nuts. Miss... Hey, uh, do I get to meet the dental or what? <laughs> Elaine, this is Chuck and Bob. Guys, this is Elaine Lefkowitz. Hi. Hi. Nice coat. You folks polar bears? <laughs> <laughs> Throw her a fish, maybe she'll do a trick. <laughs> Cute, huh? 
huh? Hi. <laughs> Danny, for me? You shouldn't have. Hi. Don't you think we should talk first? Elaine? That's her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elaine, this is Jody. Jody, this is Elaine Lefkowitz. Hi, Jody. Hi. Jody's a fruit. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, whose family's perfect? <laughs> My father's a gangster. Your father's a gangster? My father's a gangster. Hey, your son is a fruit. He's not my son. He's my son. Well, he's crazy. Uh, all right, that's it. I've had it. I'm leaving. How is invisible? Oh, my God. This is a zoo. So, uh, you want to change your mind? Hey, cutie. Want to nut around? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? I am sure Danny called and told you all to act as strange as possible. But I'm afraid you've oversold it. No family can be this crazy. So, like it or not, Danny's little chick didn't work, and we're going to go ahead with our plans. What plans? Uh, well, you see, Ma, it's, uh... <clears throat> uh... Danny and I are getting married. <laughs> oh, wonderful. He'll get a blood test, and the dare will get a rabies shot. I don't know, Father. I just don't think this retreat is working. I mean, I still think about her. In fact, I think I think about her more here than I did back home. But that could be because I need something to keep my mind off this curve. Listen, I know we're not supposed to ask for signs. We're supposed to go on faith. But do you think you can give me a sign anyway? I mean, just something to let me know I'm on the right track. Tim. <laughs> my God, is this the sign? Tim. No one could get here. This place is totally isolated. Oh, it wasn't easy, let me tell you. I had to hire an Indian guide to help me up the mountain and halfway up he quit. It's below zero out there. It's below zero in here. Tim, is this where you live? Yes, Corinne. You can't stay here. You can't stay here either. It's freezing. Now, there's a beautiful hotel down the mountain in Banff. You'll love it. There's fireplaces and room service. Let's go, Tim. <laughs> Corinne, I came here for a reason, remember? To forget you. Have you? No. Good. Father Tim. Oh, it's a vision. Father Tim, a vision. Oh. <laughs> Corinne, get out of here. In one minute, that guy's going to be on the phone with Rome, and they'll declare a new saint. Now, go. Go? After what I went through to get up here? You think it was easy? I mean, I buy a new outfit, and, and I travel to another country, and then with my history of dizzy spells, I climb a mountain with an Indian who has not seen a woman in three years. <laughs> and I finally get here, and you say, go? Forget it. You've got yourself a roommate. <laughs> Listen, Corinne, I came up here to get over you. But it's not working. But I have to see it through. I have to finish it. So please go, and, and I'll see you when I'm done. It's not working? No. <laughs> she smiles. I'm a priest, probably in love with a woman, and she smiles. In love? Corinne, please, go. OK. No, no, not the way you came. Okay. All right. But I'll be down at that hotel. 
she was here, she was. It was a vision, right, Father Tim? She was a vision, all right. <laughs> but she's gone now. Uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I've been on the mountain too long. <laughs> been so embarrassed in all my life. Why? To have to call Sheriff Tinkler to report your father's disappearance the very morning that you're to go on trial for murder. It's insane what's happening to this family. I know. We certainly are having our run of bad luck. <laughs> all that wasn't bad enough. The new tie that I was going to wear this morning, it's missing. But you should have told Sheriff Tinkler about that too, and while he's looking for Daddy, he could look for your tie. <laughs> Jessica. Huh? Well, I've checked around and none of the neighbors have seen Grandpa. Some say they hope they never do, and three say if they see him, they'll kill him. Jessica, when your father left last night, did he say where he was going? Oh, Chester, you know it doesn't matter where he says he's going. You remember the last time he said he was going for a walk and he overpowered the driver of that low and brow beer truck and claimed it for America? <laughs> Well, maybe Benson knows where he is. Where's Benson? Mother, is that what you're wearing to court? Well, yes. Well, I don't know about that dress. I mean, I think what you want to do is wear a color that's the most sympathetic to the jury. Uh, Jessica, what? where's Benson? Black should do it. I mean, widows wear black to funerals, and look how much sympathy they get. <laughs> no, I think black is too depressing. Eunice, Jessica, Benson. What about Benson, dear? Where is he? I don't know, Chester. Perhaps he's with Daddy in your new tie. Benson, where's the Major? How am I supposed to know? You look wonderful, Benson. Thank you. Benson, you know the Major gets in trouble. You're supposed to watch him. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. It ain't my job to watch him. Now, the only thing I got to watch around here is what's cooking in my oven. You want me to watch him? You put him on a platter with a lot of little potatoes on it. You know, Jessica, it's a good thing I'm not a bigot, because if I were, I could say a few things right here. Like what? Beige. You should wear beige. Beige is the perfect color, Mother. Benson, I think I tied this wrong. That's my tie. That's right. See, I don't have one of my own, so I asked Benson to pick one of yours. That would be suitable. You gave him my new tie? How about that? <laughs> he can't wear that. I'm wearing that. It's all yours. Major, where have you been? I grabbed Daddy, where have you been? Chester, he's not answering. I can see that, Jessica. But he is smiling, so wherever he's been, it was nice. I think I am in love. Chester, Daddy's got a girlfriend. Oh. Where did you meet her, Daddy? I met her in the cemetery. I go to see my old friends there. I have lots of friends there. And there she was. Sheba Pfeiffer. That's her name, and I'm in love with her. Sheba Pfeiffer. Sheba Pfeiffer. I don't think I know the family. Where did you spend the night? Colonel, as an officer and a gentleman, you shouldn't even ask that question. But this is the real thing. This is it. I haven't felt like this since my dear, departed, beloved wife. Whoever she was. <laughs> Benson! What do you want? I need you, up here. Jessica, come on out of there. Jessica, this is a murder trial. It's not a party where it's chic to be late. I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? I'm not going. You're not going at all? I'm not going at all. I see. You know they'll put you in jail for this, Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, I'm not going to let you do this to yourself. Well, I'll have to break down the door. Stand back, Jess, because the wood is going to fly. <laughs> nice work, Clint. <laughs> Good, solid door. I don't make doors like this anymore. <laughs> when are we going? As soon as I can get your mother out of the bathroom. Benson, 
I want you to go downstairs, get a ladder, go up on the, go up on the roof and through the window. Is he talking to me? What, are you crazy? I ain't going up on no roof. You go up on the roof. I'll do it. No, you won't. Oh, come on. The last time you were up on the roof, you spent the summer in traction. I ain't going up on the roof, and neither are you. You've got to get her out of there, Benson. So you go up there. Well, Benson, don't you think I would if I could? No. <laughs> well, I can't. I get nosebleeds. Nosebleeds? I'll give you a nosebleed. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll do it. No, Benson. I don't want you climbing on that roof. It's dangerous. Well, I'm going to have to go up on the roof if you don't get out of there. So if I go up there and break my neck, it'll be on your head. <laughs> Thank you. Don't be afraid, Jess. You won't be found guilty. Malou is the best. Oh, I know that, Chester. And I'm... I'm not really afraid of that. What are you afraid of? Well, I can't tell you think I'm crazy. No, I won't. I'm afraid for the trial to be over. What are you crazy about? <laughs> Why, Jess? Because it's brought us close together. We're close now, Chester. We talk, we laugh, we drink wine. We spend our evenings together and our weekends together. It's been just like a honeymoon, Chester. Well, that's the way it usually happens, Jess. It generally takes a crisis to bring people together. But it's just been so wonderful. I don't want it to end, and I'm afraid that when the trial's over, it will. But why? Well, no. If I'm found innocent, then the crisis will be over, and we'll just go back to being strangers. And if I'm found guilty, it'll definitely be over, because I'll be on death row. <laughs> that won't happen, Jess. I won't let it, I promise. Really, Chester? <laughs> really, Jess. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carol David, Mr. Malou's assistant. And you are? Uh, Mary Campbell. This is my husband, Bert. Ah, thank you. And you? Danny. Right. <laughs> and uh, Chuck. Chuck. And Bob. <laughs> and you're Jody? You sound surprised. You're the suicidal homosexual? Do we have mutual friends? <laughs> well, no, no, it just says, uh, I, I mean... Well, what did you expect, that I'd be in a dress with a noose around my neck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh... I guess what threw me is you're just so adorable. Most suicidal homosexuals are. <laughs> Uh, listen, when court adjourns for lunch, give me a chance to start off on a better foot. <laughs> Please. Okay. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, the court is now in session with the Honorable Anthony Pasillo presiding. Uh, Petrillo presiding. <laughs> Please rise. <laughs> All right, everyone be seated. <laughs> Where the hell is she? This is a murder trial. You can't be late for your own murder trial. Counselor, where's the defendant? Uh, your Honor, they were detained. I think she should be here any second. Something must have happened, Your Honor, because Jessica's always on time. That's one thing about Jessie. She's never, ever late. Counselor, who's that? Her sister, Your Honor, Mary Campbell. And this is my husband, Bert. And these are my sons. Uh, that's Bert's son. You know, last night, Jessie had a little upset stomach. Maybe she was feeling a little nauseous. Sit down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor, but we simply could not find a parking spot outside. I thought surely there would be one reserved for the defendant, but there wasn't. Everything was marked official parking only. And Chester said, this is just another example of the idiotic inefficiency of the judicial system. <laughs> is this my 
jewelry. Oh, hello. Mrs. Cheney. Mrs. Cheney. You, uh, please sit down. Nice outfit. Yeah. What's this for? In case you want to jot something down or write me a note. Why would I want to write you a note? I'm sitting right next to you. Oh, I'll tell you. If I go to Europe in the spring, I'll write you a note. Counselor, are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Is it all right if I doodle? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, look who's here. Hello, hello, Mr. Frank. Uh, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, no. Realize. Judge, 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 hold that thought one minute. We'll get right back to you. <laughs> yeah, don't you think it's silly for all of us to sit at two big tables? I mean, it creates an almost antagonistic atmosphere. This is sort of them versus us. <laughs> don't you think it would be better if we all sat at one large table? <laughs> Much warmer and friendlier than uh, Mrs. Tate, Mrs. Tate, I've endured your stalling tactics long enough. Counselor... Please. <laughs> All right, Mr. Franklin. You can begin your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have here an unusual case. Unusual in the sense that this being a small town, the defendant is familiar to most of you. You must, however, <laughs> I repeat, you must divorce yourself from any previous opinions you may have of the defendant. And instead, pay attention only to what you hear in this room. And what you will hear in this room, ladies and gentlemen, is, I'm afraid, a chilling story of how a wife and mother, cold-bloodedly, methodically, and with malice aforethought, committed murder. Oh. A mother? <laughs> How awful. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is true, and I will show you how Jessica Tate, an angry, spurned, frustrated woman... What? ...with hate in her heart, in cold blood, murdered Peter Campbell... Oh, the police. <laughs> so rude and awful in all my life. Now, Mrs. Tate, one more word from you, and I'm going to hold you in contempt. Me? Well, if there's any contempt around here, it's coming from him. I have never heard anything so contemptible in all my life, and I am not going to stand for it. I'm going. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll stay. But I must warn you, if you continue in this manner, I will not come back tomorrow. <laughs> Go on now, but be nice. <laughs> the prosecution will attempt to show, ladies. Will Danny marry Elaine? Or will he choose the carefree life of a bachelor and have his head blown off? Will Father Tim leave the retreat to see Corinne? And if he does, will they make him pay for the window? Will Jessica be found guilty of the heinous crime that Franklin has accused her of? And what does heinous mean? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of Soap. In last week's episode of Soap, Daddy brought Elaine home to meet the family. Despite Bert's invisibility, Mary's hostility, Jody's homosexuality, and Chuck and Bob's insanity, Elaine wants to marry him anyway. Perhaps she doesn't plan on having children. Meanwhile, at Jessica's trial, Malou's assistant Carol has asked Jody out, even though he's gay. Jody has accepted, even though she's a girl. Jessica turned her trial into a tea party, and then tried to leave when the prosecutor said nasty things about her and spoiled the fun. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells. And this is Soap.
This is a terrific place. I'm so glad we came. I'm just glad I finally got you out at night. Carol, lunch, dinner, what's the difference? Dinner is romantic. <laughs> Carol, there's not gonna be any romance here. Why? I'm a homosexual, remember? <laughs> I've been meaning to speak to you about that. Listen, Carol, I like you, but uh, I'm gay. So if you have expectations other than being friends... I, I... want to go to bed with you. <laughs> Listen, Carol, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered, but uh, due to circumstances beyond my control... You mean I... you don't want to go to bed with me? Right. You're kidding. No. You mean you would rather go to bed with him than me? <laughs> him? Him? <laughs> him. Why would you want to go to bed with him? I'm better looking than he is. I mean, I wouldn't even want to go to bed with him. <laughs> oh, you know, this is wonderful. I finally meet a guy I really like, and he hates me. I don't hate you. I like you. I just don't want to sleep with you. You don't like me. I do, a lot. I love being with you. Listen, we can be friends and we can see each other all the time. We can? Sure, as friends. And we can go out? Absolutely, as friends. And we could go away for a weekend together. <laughs> well, I... As friends. Right, as friends. Well, would you come to the Cape with me this weekend? See, I was going to go by myself, but I'd really much rather go with you. As friends? Right. Okay, but just as friends. Right. <laughs> tell who's who here. What do you mean, Don? I mean, look at them. They all look alike. I mean, which ones are the patients and which ones are the visitors? Maybe they're all visitors, Bert. Mary, you have visitors visiting the visitors? <laughs> <laughs> who, no, no, who are the doctors? I can't tell who anybody is here. Hello. Hello? Sure, hello. It's easy for you to say hello. Hello, I'll give you hello. Hello! <laughs> I think I'll be able to tell. Hi. Hello. Hi. You here to check in? Yes, please. Name? Bert, Bert Campbell. Campbell. Bert Campbell. Doctor's name? Medlow. Ah, Dr. Medlow. He's a good man. Symptoms? Invisibility. Hey, that's not bad. I'm paranoid. I beg your pardon? Paranoid. The secret police are after me. The Argentinian secret police. And they might be back. So, uh, that's why I keep changing hats. It confuses them. <laughs> I see Harold's admitted you. I'm Dr. Resnick. You must be Mr. Campbell. Yes, hello. Hi. I'll give you two a few minutes to say goodbye, and then I'll be back to show you around. Now, where were we? He's a patient. Hey, with these hats, you think I'm on staff? <laughs> Harold Bromfman, paranoid schizophrenic. You work here? Oh, yeah, we all help out. <laughs> well... I'll see you later. It's a cheerful place. Mary, please don't, huh? Come on. We all know what it is. But, darling, they'll help you. They'll help you get better. I don't know, Mary. Doesn't look like they've been much help to the Mad Hatter. Bert, we don't know. You know, maybe this is an improvement. Maybe when he first came here, he'd change his entire outfit. <laughs> This is not an easy goodbye. It's not goodbye. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, but will I? <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll see. Last time I felt like this, I was five, and my mother left me in kindergarten. I felt like my life was over. I know, darling, but uh, I'll, I'll be here every day. I promise. You call me if you need anything. Okay? See you tomorrow. Huh? 
I love you. Scared? <laughs> what? You're scared stiff. Hey, hey, I'm not scared stiff. What have I got to be scared stiff of? Well, you got a guy talking to you, changes hats every 10 seconds. You got a lady over there who thinks NBC is trying to kill her by shooting death rays into her so we can never watch Johnny Carson. <laughs> got a guy over there who thinks he's the Incredible Hulk's cousin by marriage. Okay, okay, so hold on, I'm a little scared. You'd be crazy if you weren't. <laughs> hey, listen, I was terrified. I got here, I said, that's it, Harold, you're never getting out. But I'm getting better. You are? Oh, yeah. I'm getting out in a couple of weeks. What about the hats? We're working on it. <laughs> listen, Bert, they'll make you better here. They really will. Uh, look, the really nice thing about it is, you remember how crazy you felt on the outside? You'd worry what people would think, huh? Well, here, you never feel the least bit crazy. Hey, how can you? <laughs> Come on, I'll show you your room. Okay, thanks. Oh, well, uh, here. Have a hat. I mean, the minute we find Billy, I am leaving. I absolutely refuse to bring any more tragedy into this family. Jessica, stop talking nonsense. No, I am a curse. I am like one enormous jinx. If Edgar Allan Poe were alive, he'd fall in love with me. <laughs> Jessica, it's perfectly normal for a young man to run away at one time or another. No, it's me. Something awful happens, just look around. I'll be in the vicinity. <laughs> Jessica. Peter gets murdered, Bert goes insane, Corinne runs away, Billy leaves home. Now, I am very surprised India had those floods without me. <laughs> Maybe he went to Jennifer's. He wouldn't be caught dead at Jennifer's. Benson, he happens to be in love with Jennifer. Oh, that was last week. This week he hates her guts. <laughs> you want me to get there? If you don't mind. <laughs> Dick Tracy. Well, did you find him? Why, this family is a whole career. Did you find him, Tinkler? It's incredible what goes on in this house. I mean, she's on trial for murder. Judge tells me you're an embezzler. The major shoots up the neighborhood. Now your son's run away from home. Have you folks ever considered family counseling? <laughs> Tinkler, you meddling moron. Did you find him? He's lucky he found this house. I'm going to find Billy. Give me your keys. Now, yeah, wait a minute. That's an official car. It's okay. I'll tell him I'm you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no, wait a minute. Huh? Better take my hat. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Waiting for you. Is uh, something the matter? Let's talk. Yeah, sure. What is it? You and Elaine. Oh, yeah. Danny, do you love her? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the strangest love I've ever seen. I watch the two of you. Every time she opens her mouth, you cringe. You make believe you don't hear her when she asks you a question, and a few times you stuck your tongue out at her when her back was turned. Well, uh, were you uh, spying on us? Spying? You were at the dinner table. <laughs> Dad, don't marry without love. There's nothing lonelier than that. Where would Bert and I be now if we didn't love each other? I have to marry her. She's pregnant. <laughs> Danny, you don't have to marry these days for that. These are modern times. Pregnancy is no longer a reason to marry in panic. She's not pregnant. Thank God. <laughs> Good night, Ma. 
Then why are you marrying her? <sighs> Ma, you remember when I told you that the mob had a contract out on me? Well, Elaine intervened and saved my life. Well, Danny, gratitude is nice. <laughs> but you don't have to marry her. I mean, something from Tiffany's would be ample. I have to marry her. Danny, I don't know how to say this. Uh, what? Well, I'm afraid I'll hurt you. Hey, come on, Ma. All right. Danny, she's awful. <laughs> she's selfish and sarcastic and pushy and tactless and cruel and obnoxious. And her father will kill me if I don't marry her. People can change. <laughs> Well, I guess it's bedtime. <coughs> Night, Ma. Good night, Danny. I am really the kiss of death. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when Daddy and I went to Florida last year? First frost in 50 years killed the entire orange crop. <laughs> Jessica, knock it off. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, did you find him? Who? Billy. Billy who? <laughs> Billy, your grandson. Oh, the lad. No. But did you know this town has a black sheriff? Come on, Grandpa, I'll get you some tea. Here we are. Oh, honey. Are you all right? Here are your car keys. Yeah, good. And your handcuff keys. Handcuff keys? Yeah, while I was out, I arrested a drunk driver. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. <laughs> are you people through with the hero's welcome? This is a runaway kid, not a lost puppy, you know. Are you going to tell him, or should I? You have a way of making me look good? Go on, tell him. Well, I got my report card back, and I failed math. Figured this family has enough trouble. Why add to it? I mean, with Mom on trial for murder, Corinne leaving, and now Dad being... No, we know, we know. <laughs> so I couldn't show you my report card, and I decided to run away. But when I was hitchhiking, the first car that stopped, I got scared and ran into the bushes. Oh, I had this awful picture that the driver turned out to be the garbage bag killer. <laughs> and 40 years from now, they discover my body in a glad bag and you'd identify me from the films. <laughs> I'm sorry I did it. Hope you're not mad at me. I mean, you really don't need that now with mom in trial for murder and dad being... Uh, we know. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. And I work on my math. Billy, we are your family. We love you. Don't you know that there's nothing in the world that you could do that's so bad that you couldn't tell us? I mean, after all, I'm on trial for murder and your father's oh, about we know. We know. <laughs> Good night. Okay, son, why don't you go upstairs and get some sleep? Thanks, Dad. Hi, Gramps. Oh, there you are. Look, everybody, I found him. <laughs> You had us worried sick. I'm sorry. Say, did you know this town has a black sheriff? <laughs> and so I remember that night very well. I ate chili and had gas. I couldn't get to sleep, so I stayed up and watched all the late movies. Then, at the crack of dawn, I heard Mr. Tate trip over the extension cord that I forgot to fix. And his cursing kept me up the whole rest of the night. So I know Mrs. Tate never went out. My goodness, we have the incredible Kreskin here. We do? Where? It's amazing recall, Mr. Benson. Absolutely amazing retention of detail. Thank you. Tell me, uh, is this some sort of voodoo way of knowing that you people have, or what? I object. I do, too. All right. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Benson, keeping your eyes on me now. If you would please demonstrate some more of this amazing talent. 
What colored tie is the foreman wearing? Green with red stripes. And the woman seated directly behind him, what is she wearing? Yellow blouse with a blue scarf. And the man seated next to her? <laughs> Three-piece blue suit with a blue shirt and a blue tie that clashes. And, <laughs> and then the, the other guy... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> You have a wonderful memory, but that doesn't prove that Mrs. Tate didn't tiptoe out and you didn't hear her. You may step down. What? Aha! Uh -huh. I said you may step down, but you didn't hear me. Wonderful memory, rotten hearing. I call Mr. Chester Tate to the stand. No further questions? I have no questions. You may step down. The man mumbled. I hear great. <laughs> You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God? Of course I do, Tinkler. Benson, that was terrific. How did you remember what the jury was wearing? I could see the reflection in the window. <laughs> now then, Mr. Tate, according to your deposition on the night in question, you did not sleep with Mrs. Tate, is that correct? I believe it is. Actually, Mr. Tate, you hadn't slept with her for a long time. Probably because you were busy sleeping with everything else around. All right, right strike that. I'm sorry, <laughs> Counselor. Please forgive me if I referred to the man as a cheat and a womanizer. Now then, Mr. Tate, on that night, what time was it you last saw your wife? She did not go out, if that's what you mean. She didn't leave the house. I see. And uh, why should we believe you, Mr. Tate? Because I'm telling the truth. I was sworn in. I see. So you're asking us to believe a man who is being investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission for stock fraud and embezzlement. Oh, good! <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. This is not Mr. Tate's trial. Sustain. Well, what's your behavior, Counselor? I, I am sorry, Your Honor. I, I, I just got carried away. Forgive me if I call the man a liar and a thief and a cheat. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I'm also very impressed that you can be so fair and impartial towards a man who personally cheated you out of $40,000. No more questions? I have no questions. Your Honor, step down. But Your Honor, step down. <coughs> Cheat in a womanizer once in the war. Someone to be with during the end. The next day, I was wounded and shipped home. Tate, will you please sit down? Still pains me when the weather's damp. <laughs> the prosecution would like to recall to the stand Jessica Tate. Goody. Now, Mrs. Tate, remember, you're still under oath. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Watch this. Mrs. Tate, did you know Peter Campbell? Yes. You took tennis lessons from him, did you not? <laughs> yes. You were also having an affair with him, weren't you, Mrs. Tate? Your Honor, I absolutely refuse to discuss my personal life with this man. What is past is past. What is past is past? Uh, this is a trial. All right, Mrs. Tate, I order you to answer the question. Were you having an affair with Peter Campbell? Oh, no. <laughs> jury, jury. It was very brief. <laughs> of course it was brief. You killed him. Objection. Sustained. I'm sorry, I withdraw the remark. The jury will please disregard that last remark. Disregard it? I love it. How can they disregard it? You've already said it. One more outburst from you, and I'm going to have Mr. Winkler remove you from the courtroom. T Tinkler, Your Honor, Chief Tinkler. Oh, who cares? <laughs> Lenore Feldman. That's who it is. It has been driving me crazy for days. I knew, I knew you. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Tate, this is a Lenore court of law. Feldman, we Your Honor, remember we did the who? With the PTA thing. Wally, wally, holly, holly, wally, yeah. And a love went down the drain, oh, with the lava from the volcano. Ooh, I love it. Drano, volcano. It rhymes. 
Your Honor, I move that Mrs. Feldman be replaced by an alternate since she had a prior relationship with the island princess. Granted. So, you were having an affair with Peter Campbell, a man young enough to be your son. Hmm. The man with whom your daughter was in love. Her daughter, ladies and gentlemen. And she couldn't stand to see her daughter have him. So Shoot that man! <laughs> So this sick woman, left alone, frustrated, spurned. Objection, Your Honor. The prosecution is trying to create a smokescreen of smut and lies to hide the fact that their case is built only on the most meager circumstantial evidence. Your Honor, this case is a travesty. The prosecution is making a mockery of the judicial system. Is this America? Is this justice? Is this the end of my career? <laughs> I move for dismissal. I right am, right Now, it seems that Mr. Maru is correct, Mr. Franklin. Unless you can give me a good reason to continue, I'm going to have to dismiss this case. All right, it was going to be a surprise. <laughs> but, Your Honor, tomorrow you will hear testimony so startling, so damaging to the defendant that we'll be lucky if the jury doesn't leap over the railing and lynch her on the spot. <laughs> Will Jody and Carol go away for the weekend as just friends? What will they come back as? Will the hospital make Bert better? And if so, is invisibility covered by Blue Cross? Will Elaine change like Mary hopes? Or is Danny doomed to be married to a selfish, sarcastic, loud, pushy, tactless, cruel, and obnoxious person? Who is Franklin's surprise witness? And after hearing this witness's testimony, will the jury really jump over the railing and lynch Jessica on the spot? Would this be legal? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of Soap.